Good afternoon, Husky Pups. I thought I would start off by giving you a few clues about today's ecosystem. I got a hat on to help with the sun, got some shades on also to help with the sun, got some sunscreen with me. My face got a little red today, so I've got some aloe. So I'm in an ecosystem that is really, really hot. What ecosystem are we going to talk about today? If you guessed deserts, you were correct. Today's ecosystem is the desert. I'm going to first start by reminding you about our three key ELA standards for the day. RI 3.2, I can identify the main idea of a text, recount key details and explain how they support the main idea. So main idea and details. Vocabulary words, RI 3.4, I can determine the meaning of unknown words in a third grade text. And our last key ELA standard, RI 3.7, illustrations. I can use information from the illustrations and the words to demonstrate an understanding of the text. So any questions about that, let your teacher know, but these are our three key standards. So today's book that, like I said yesterday, I'm pulling right off of Epic, so you can go read it when we're done. What do you find on a saguaro cactus? What is a desert? Deserts are very dry areas with very little rainfall. Deserts are normally very hot during the day and cold at night. Even though they can be hard places to live, many plants and animals find special ways to stay alive. So here we have a desert that's located in our country, all right? And like most nonfiction books, we see a map here. Living in a desert, many animals come out only at night when the sun goes down. This is when it is cool enough to move around. Desert plants such as cactus save water. The saguaro cactus is the largest cactus in the United States. It lives only in the Sororan Desert. So look at those huge cactuses. The saguaro cactus system. A system is made up of pieces working together. Each part of the system relies on each other. An ecosystem, which is our theme for this week, is a system made up of all living and non-living things found in one place. A saguaro cactus is a type of an ecosystem. So animals and living and non-living things all live in this cactus. So if we look over here, we can see a great detailed illustration. So that ties in with one of our standards. This illustration gives us an understanding of all of the different animals that live there. A working system. Plants and animals are living things. Living things change as they grow. They make new living things. Plants grow seeds to start new plants. Animals have babies. Non-living things are not alive. They cannot grow or change. Life in the desert. Living things need both non-living and other living things to survive in the desert. Air, sand, water, and sunshine are all non-living things. We do not always notice non-living things, but they are important parts of life in the desert. So here we see the word survive, and that is a vocabulary word, and we look around it for context clues to help understand what the word means. Needs to meet. Plants need water, air, and sunlight to make their own food. This food gives them energy to grow. Animals need air, food, water, and shelter to stay alive. Plants and animals only live in ecosystems where their needs are met. And I love this book because it has great captions and great illustrations. Desert air. 
All living things need air to survive. Air is a non-living thing. It is found all around the saguaro cactus ecosystem. Insects take in air through holes along the sides of their bodies. Animals such as foxes breathe air with their lungs. Cool ears. Desert air is hot and dry during the day. Desert foxes have extra large ears. When desert breezes blow over the fox's ears, the warm blood in their ears is cooled. The cooler blood flows back through the fox's body. This helps them stay cool. So this whole section here talks about the ears and how it's an adaption. So this would be a great example of main idea and details. The main idea is how animals use their ears in the desert. These sentences give specific details on how they use their ears. Drink it up. All living things depend on water to survive. In the Sororan Desert, it is hot and dry for most of the year. Plants that live here, such as the saguaro cactus, grow very slowly because there is not a lot of water. And that's the cool thing about cactuses is they grow and they flourish, but they don't have a lot of water. They're strong like that. A thirsty cactus. A saguaro cactus can survive up to two years without rain. Wow, two years, third grade. Its roots spread out far across the ground. This helps the cactus take up water from the ground quickly. Water is stored in the cactus's stem and branches. Plants and animals depend on the saguaro cactus for water. Some great, look at this little bighorn sheep there getting a drink from the cactus. Finding food. Living things need food in order to live and grow. Plants make their own food using sunlight, air, and water. Animals cannot make their own food, so they get energy from eating other living things. Eating in the desert. Some animals eat only plants. The seeds inside the saguaro cactus fruits are a good source of energy. Kangaroo rats eat seeds and also spread seeds for new saguaro cacti as they move around. Some animals eat other animals. Tiny elf owls hunt small animals like kangaroo rats. So one important thing about an ecosystem is a food change, all right? And here's an example of that too, and that's why this is another great book about ecosystem. And here is a great vocabulary word, and the way it gives you clues about what it means is it gives you the definition. A food chain shows how energy moves from one living thing to another in an ecosystem. This is an example of a saguaro cactus food chain. Home sweet cactus, and this is why this big cactus is a great example of an ecosystem. Many animals use a saguaro cactus for shelter. They can hide there from animals that want to eat them or use it to escape the heat in its cool dark inside. Some animals use a saguaro cactus to raise their babies. And there you can see a great picture of the nest. So this is why illustrations are very important because we can look at this and we can see the birds making their nest, making their home in this huge, large cactus. Birds of a feather. Saguaro cacti are big enough that some animals can live inside them. Woodpeckers make a cactus home by pecking holes in the trunk to lay eggs. Other birds such as owls will then use these holes to stay safe from other animals or keep cool from the sun. So it's Fascinating to think about all of the different animals that can live in this cactus. Protecting the saguaro cactus. Saguaro cacti are often used for yard decorations in the American Southwest. They are expensive to buy. Some people take them from the wild and then sell them for use in gardens. So just like we learned last week, boys and girls, with Earth Day and protecting trees, it's the same thing with cactuses. It is important to treat the saguaro cactus ecosystem with respect because many living things depend on it to survive in the desert, okay? Lots of animals live inside that cactus. Doing more harm than good, taking a wild saguaro cactus out of its environment is against the law. It harms the natural desert environment and affects many kinds of animals. 
a model home, and this could be something that you'd want to try this week. Scientists use models to help us understand how things are connected. A model is a representation of a real object. A model can show how different parts of something work together. Maps, pictures, storyboards, and diagrams are all kinds of models. So as you can see here, they had some clay and they made a cactus. I would love to see you do that this week and take a picture of it and post it on Class Dojo. How awesome would that be? Make it colorful, the little flowers. I love how they did that. Dig a little deeper. Scientists use models to help them learn more about the system they study. Now it is your turn. Choose one of the living things in your model. Tell family and friends what might happen if it disappeared from the ecosystem. What, which other things would be affected and why? And I'm just going to remind you again that in the very back are more vocabulary words with their definitions and those are super important and they tie right in with our ecosystems. So another detail I found is that two books that you are, they're actually on YouTube if you want to go and read them and listen to them. The Seed and the Giant Saguaro and Cactus Hotel. Cactus Hotel we used to do years ago in third grade and it's a, it's a really cool story and it really helps you understand how animals come in and out of the cactus and why it's important to keep this ecosystem safe. Now you are going to click on Mrs. Faulkner's video and she will have an activity activity for you. Have a great day guys.